This week on Maker Update, a motion activated bike light, a new better Raspberry Pi Zero, a tiny retro Apple II, a stunning animated LED lamp, a time travel TV, e-ink displays, a board for car hacking, and easy fiber optics. It's Wednesday, March 1st. I'm Donald Bell, and welcome to another Maker Update. I found a lot of cool projects this week, plus some really big news from Raspberry Pi. And I've also got a new gig from the wire cutter. I'm going to be helping them put together a guide for the best soldering irons for beginners. So if you have a great suggestion for a good soldering iron for a beginner or a kid, let me know. Okay, leave me a comment or get in touch. And uh, with that, let's move on to the project of the week. The amazing Bob Claggett from I Like To Make Stuff created this cool motion activated bike light using an Arduino a rechargeable 12 volt LiPo battery pack, and some Adafruit NeoPixel LED strips. What's great about this project is that there's really not a lot to it, and the payoff is fantastic. You've got 12 volts running from the battery to the Arduino 101 board, which is the $30 variation of an Arduino Uno that uses the Intel Curie chip and includes a built-in gyro sensor and accelerometer, which Bob takes advantage of. From there, the LED lights are also powered by the battery, but with a $7 converter in between that steps the voltage down to the five volts needed by the LEDs. The data wire on the LED strip goes to a single digital pin on the Arduino responsible for telling the lights when to turn on and off. 90% of the wiring here is just getting power to the different parts. The magic is in the code, which monitors the built-in Arduino sensors to detect when the bike is moving, which signals the lights to go on. If you come to a stop, the code keeps the lights going for around three seconds before timing out to a dimmer amber color. The results look great, and there's still a lot you could do with this, a lot of ways you could push it further. You could have the lights change color when it detects that you're turning or slowing down. You could adapt uh, this whole project for use on a longboard or even a costume. It's great. Uh, you can check out Bob's full video linked here or in these show notes. You should check it out. Now for news. Huge news! Just yesterday, the Raspberry Pi Foundation announced a new version of their $5 Pi Zero board called the Raspberry Pi Zero W. That W is for wireless. The board now costs $10 and is essentially the same as the last Zero, but with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built right in. The same size, same shape, same one gigahertz single core processor that's slower than the Pi 2 and the 3, the same infuriating little micro USB port, but really, this is a huge deal. As anyone who's ever played around the Raspberry Pi Zero already knows, it's really not a $5 board. It's never been a $5 board. When you factor in all of the other things you need to pay for to get it up and running uh, the way you want it, a USB expansion, a Wi-Fi dongle, Bluetooth dongle, all the stuff, it, a project-ready version of the Pi Zero winds up being more like $20 to $30 all in, right? But having all of that baked right in for $10 means that you can connect up any Bluetooth peripherals and connect to Wi-Fi and still have that USB port free for other stuff. It makes the board so much more approachable and truly delivers on an ultra low cost computer for students and makers to play with. I'm super excited to check it out. I'll probably have to wait though because already I'm seeing that outlets like Adafruit are sold out. The demand for the original Zero made supply pretty spotty. I can't imagine that this one's gonna be much easier. In an interview with Make Magazine, Matt Richardson from Raspberry Pi says that they've sold over 400,000 Raspberry Pi Zeros since the product launched at the end of 2015. That's insane. Now for some other great projects I found this week. Check out this working miniature Apple II computer. I found this through makezine.com. It's a project by Chris Larkin. It uses a $9 chip computer board running Linux and a piece of Apple II emulator software called Lin Apple Pi. The enclosure is constructed from a 3D print that Chris links to for printing your own, and the display is a $45 NTSC display from Adafruit. Now the little keyboard on here isn't functional, but you can connect a USB keyboard to do most things. There's also an onboard speaker for sound, and I love how he even included a little power button up in the top right. There's a GitHub link in the show notes that will show you everything you need to make your own. Also, look at this reactive LED pendant lamp from Martin Cowell. Honestly, I scrolled right past this one on Instructables until I saw it again later on the Adafruit blog. 
because still photos don't do this justice. Fortunately, a single animated GIF here gives you just a hint at how amazing this thing really looks. I could watch this all day. The lamp uses eight four meter strips of NeoPixel LEDs that are strung up across a framework of laser cut eighth inch plywood. A teensy microcontroller is used to program the light animations, which were written in collaboration with Danny Wilson. There's also a considerable power supply on here that's needed to drive all these lights, but man, just look at it. And for a simple crafty pie project, check out this TV time machine by Wellington DeRays. It's basically just a Raspberry Pi 2 wired up to a small monitor playing a loop of vintage TV pulled from archive.org. Maybe the knobs switch on the power or adjust the volume, or maybe they're just there for show. But what I love about this project is that it's all about the execution. It takes an eye for the look of a vintage enclosure to pull it off. The, the seafoam color, that grill cloth, the knobs, the masked outline of the screen. I could even see you going super small with these, something like that mini Apple II, and selling them on Etsy. I bet the retro community would flip out over something like this. All right, and now for a few tools and tips. Adafruit is now stocking a 2.7 inch e-ink display for Raspberry Pi called the Papyrus 2.7. It's a Pi hat that fits right onto most Raspberry Pi boards. It's $50, which isn't cheap, but it's ultra low power. It retains images and text even when the power is off. You can read it in daylight, and it even includes four buttons. I'm not sure yet what I'd use it for, but I'm a sucker for weird displays. They also stock a super small one that fits right onto a Pi Zero or a Zero W that sells for $35. I saw a Kickstarter for a product called Machina. It's an Arduino based tool for reading data from your car's OBD2 port, which is that standard diagnostic port that repair shops use for resetting your car's notifications. But it also spits out all kinds of interesting real time data about your car. If you're into car hacking or wiring up custom readouts of car data, this might be just the thing for you. It sells for $80 and ships in July. I also noticed this new guide on Adafruit for adapting the Circuit Playground project board with fiber optics. If you don't know the Circuit Playground, it's a fun $20 Arduino compatible board that includes 10 color changing LEDs right on the board. This guide shows you how to easily adapt those LEDs to feed into fiber optic tubes or strands for cool effects. Maker Fairs! There are no Maker Fairs this weekend, so I thought I'd take this chance to remind you all that I'll be speaking at the Mission Creek Festival in Iowa City, Iowa on Saturday, April 8th, giving a talk on the Maker Movement. It's still a month away, but it would be great to see some of you there. I'll also be giving a soldering workshop that morning, helping people put together their own Larson Scanner Kit from Evil Mad Scientist. I'm really looking forward to that. I also learned this week about the annual Midwest Rep Rap Festival happening in Goshen, Indiana, taking place March 25th and 26th. It's a free event and sounds like a 3D printer's paradise. And that does it for this week's Maker Update. Uh, like I said up at the top, I could really use your suggestions on great soldering irons for beginners. I'm gonna be ordering up some of these soon for my piece on thewirecutter.com and your input could really help make that roundup extra great, all right? And uh, you can email me. I'm Donald at MakerProjectLab.com. You should also subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't already. And that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.